If you've ever wondered how to make your shopping ads on Google show a strike through price, just like we see on this Nest thermostat with 280 struck through and then the actual price 239.99, I'll show you how to do that in this video, so stick with me. First thing, an attribute, and the attribute is part of your Google Merchant Center data. And the sale price is a specific attribute that you can use to put in a lower than normal price. So if your normal price is, let's say, $100 and you're marking it down to $75, you would add $75 as your sale price. You can see a demonstration here of what that would look like, but I'll show you what the data should look like when it comes in. So you'll have your price followed by a space and then the currency code. I'm in the United States, so it's USD for me. And then all you have to do is follow these minimum rules. And so you have to clearly display the sale and non-sale price on your website. You have to submit the price just as normal, and it has to be higher than the sale price. So the price has to be higher than the sale price. And this can't be an ongoing forever sale. So if you've been running a, like a sale for a year and your normal price is a hundred dollars, but you're marking it down on sale for $75 and that's been going on for several months, then you're probably not going to show this anymore because Google will understand that, Hey, that's not the sale price. That's just the normal price. And this shop is pretending that it's on sale. So you can't do this forever. Google used to state exactly how long you could do it. Um, it was around 90 days, I recall, but right now Google's not publishing that information. So just know that this can't be the forever price. It has to actually be a special price that's time limited. There's a second attribute that you can add, which is sale price effective date. So if you want to get things set up in advance for a holiday sale or a big promo that you're doing, you can submit a sale price like we just submitted, but you can also submit a sale price effective date. So for example, now it's March, but if you're going to run a sale in June, you can submit the sale price with the sale price effective date of June 1st. And then that way Google knows when to expect that sale price to actually be real. And so you'll use this along with the sale price, and then you'll fill it out with this format, which it's kind of tricky, but you can always refer back to this um, Google Merchant Center help article. So what would that look like in an actual product feed? Let's take an example from a uh, Google Sheet. This is the Google Sheet template that you can download. I'll also show you how to do this in my preferred tool, which is Data Feed Watch. That's a third party tool, but this is a free method, obviously, and it helps to explain. So here we have our price, $15. And then if I wanted to put in a discount, let's say 10 USD, and then I'll put in my sale price effective date, which um, it won't be 2016 because now it's 2025. So let's do 2025. And then we have the date time zone, um, then the end date, which we'll put 2025 again. And it's March right now. So let's say we're doing this in June. So I'm going to switch these up. That's actually April, but that's fine. All right. So then you would submit this to Google Merchant Center. And what you'll find in Google Merchant Center is the price and the sale price, and the sale price will be less. Now, if you want to do this at scale, which will be with the product data feed tool like Data Feed Watch, not with a Google Sheet, that just won't work. So with Data Feed Watch, I'll show you how I do this. So I'll look at our Shopify data. So this is for our Shopify data. I'm in the bulk editor, which is this, and I can see that there's two prices. There's the compare at price, which is 20, and then the price, which is 15. The compare at price is higher. It's the higher of the two. So as an example, here's that live product. $20 is the higher price it's crossed out because it's on sale. It's on sale for $15 and that's the lower of the two prices. So I'll go back into data feed watch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Google, that's what this is going to go to. This is going to go to Google, that price, the blue box. I'm going to set the price to the compare at price because that's the higher of the two prices. If you refer back to our Google sheet, I switched that to $20. That's the higher of the two prices. And in Shopify lingo, the higher of the two prices is compare at price, like we just saw. And so I'll tell Data Feed Watch, rename the price, compare at price, only if the compare at price is actually higher than the price. Otherwise, we're just going to rename it price. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about this rule right now. You can refer back to this video later if you're doing this. Then the sale price, that's the lower of the two prices. And in Shopify lingo, 
the lower of the two prices, it's just the price. So you can see that here in our bulk editor, price is 15, it's the lower of the two prices. And so in Data Feed Watch, I'm gonna tell uh, Data Feed Watch that Google sale price, we're gonna rename that to the price, but only if price is actually less than the compare at price, otherwise just leave it empty because it won't apply. So if I hit preview here, for the sale price, we're submitting $15 which is this one, that's lower. And then for, that's the sale price. For the price, we're submitting $20. That's the higher of the two product prices. That's that one right there. So just like before with the Google Sheet, the end result, this is a different product, but the end result, you're gonna see the price is the higher of the two, the sale price is the lower of the two. And then in your ads, you are eligible to show this strike through price. So that's how you set that up in Google ads. Make sure to follow our channel, like this video for more tips. Thanks for watching and good luck advertising.